Greetings, fellow humans. Welcome to the Brandon Lunch Bunch. We're a group of business owners and professionals in Central Florida, and we're getting together to share tips and ideas on doing business in these stay-at-home COVID times. Online meeting services provided by A Better Choice Network Solutions. Brandon Lunch Bunch is a production of Pace Setter Media. Greetings and welcome to the May 21st Brandon Lunch Bunch. My name is Dave Lobig. Uh, my topic today is uh, how big you are on camera. I did a quick informal survey of uh, news shows and how how they framed people on camera, how big their head is on camera. I'll talk about that. Uh, Darren, please, can you introduce yourself and your topic? Good morning, everyone. Thanks for having me. Today, I'd like to talk a little, little about the guest perspective. If you've been tuning into the Brandon Lunch Bunch, you would have uh, heard us talk about when it's right to reopen and the factors that went into that, which are the, the health, the financial, and the governance. Well, I think it's time to consider the guest perspective and how that's going to factor in. So my name's Darren Dennington from Service with Style, Secret Shopping and Consulting. Thanks for having me. Thanks. Larry, please. What I'm going to nail down today is using a webcam, not necessarily a high-end cam. So normally I uh, I do these with a nice high-end camera, but I'm using just my plain old webcam because I'm going to talk about lighting using uh, one of the cheaper or more available webcams, maybe something built into your iPad, iPhone, or your tablet. Thank you. And Mac. Hey, hello, everybody. This is Mac Harold McIntosh with the uh, Principal Financial Group. And today I'm going to talk about a business most important asset, and that's their employees. And I'm going to talk about a plan to uh, help you recruit and retain employees, mainly to retain your most important employees, your key employees. So an employee retention plan today. Thank you. And Darren, you're up first. Please take it away. Wonderful. I'm just going to share my screen for a second, Dave, if you don't mind. And let me know when you've got it. Yes, I see it. You got it. Wonderful. So the guest perspective, right? That's uh, a big part of what we do at Service with Style is, is secret shopping. And we've always really looked at it as... The, the piece that is the variable, and I apologize, I'm jumping around a little bit. Let me get to my right slide. So for the past 10 years, we've looked at value as the, the portion or the quality or the, the product that we receive. We've also looked at the, the experience, right? The, the ease of getting in and out of a business and the setting, the decor and the atmosphere. And we've also looked at the, the connection, how we a bond with the, the server or the bartender or the, the service provider. Well, how we've been looking at business right now is can we even open, right? We've got the, the health concerns. You've got everything to do with the financial and we're following restrictions, right? Are you able to open to 50% or so we just sent out a, a really great survey. And I say just, I literally mean that we got almost 1500 responses in the last 12 hours. And we wanted to understand what people were thinking and, and feeling right now. How I've always looked at the, the guest perspective, right? If you truly want me to trust you as a, a business and want me to value your services and, and come back frequently, you've got to share with me the type of experience that says that that's where I trust you. How I've always looked at it is think about the last restaurant you went into, right? Whether it was Chick-fil-A or you went out to Burns Steakhouse and whether it was last week or uh, three months ago. When you left, you got this type of experience. And we always judge that as a score, right? A 90%, a 62%. And this is looking at every single aspect of the experience. We found that when you provided the people with a 90% and above, something that was just wonderful, then they instantly increased their frequency. If they were dining with you monthly, now you've got them twice a month. To trust, to truly trust a business, you have to share with me that type of experience three times in a row. Now I trust where my money is going. Well, when the economic crash of 10 years ago took place, we started looking at restaurants a, a little bit different. And we understood that 
we still wanted to dine out, but we knew that the financial restraints that were put on us was we were only going to spend our money where we felt value. So it took us a long time to build this trust with our consumers. Now you're facing the economic and the scare piece, the, the virus. So what you've got to be considering is the different type of perspectives, the, the things that are now important to your guests. So we sent out a survey and we wanted to know what the three main factors were in selecting a restaurant. And I was really surprised that quality of food was still the, the highest piece that even in today's society right now that they still want quality of food. So they're still looking for that type of experience. But the second piece was the sanitation procedures. When we used to come up with value in the restaurants previous, it was a much different model. Well, now to have value and to have me comfortable, you've got to be handling everything properly with the procedures and to have me trust in you. I have to see that. I, I have to feel comfortable the second that I come in, because if I don't feel comfortable, I'm not going to start dining with you or shopping with you again regularly. And then we wanted to know the, the confidence, right? The, the, the proactive steps that are being taken by the business. Do the guests feel that they're confident that you're doing it right? And only 14% were very confident that they thought that the businesses were truly handling everything that they could to be proactive. And only somewhat confident was at 41%. And there's still a big piece out there, a big piece of your regular customers that you've known for a lot of years that just aren't comfortable coming out. So take a, take a good look at your, your customer base and what they're, they're thinking and feeling. And that's what I got for you today, Dave. Thank you, sir. Good stuff as usual. Thank you Thank so you. much. Mr. Becker, you're up next, please. All righty. I'm just going to do a couple minutes here really quick and help you if you use a webcam to have your webcam be its best possible. So one of the things that I do is I add light in my environment and I turn off light in my environment. Let me tell you what I'm talking about. I have outside sunshine light that I love coming into my office here. And I close the blinds because if it's open, then, and I'm going to show you this. So with those blinds open, that whole side of my face gets way too white and blown out. And that's because there's too much light. So then you have to kind of fight with that light by adding lots and lots and lots more light in your environment. Nobody wants to have to manage all that. So the first thing to do is close any outside light, put poster board over the windows if you have to go that route, but cut off any exterior light. Cause you can't really control it and you can't control when the cloud is going to go by, or maybe you're doing a live stream late at night and it's not even light out. So, uh, just get rid of those lights. Now you do need to add some light and you should add it over near where your camera is. So over near where my camera is, I've got some light. If you don't have lights, I'm going to show you a very affordable way that you can add some lights to your environment. You've seen these hardware store clamp lamps. So you can get something like this. And then inside of it, I just have a curly compact fluorescent daylight adjusted bulb. If you haven't ever heard, if you've never heard of daylight bulbs, I will tell you really quickly, and you may not even find the curly ones anymore. I think they're getting in short supply. You can find something like this. This is an LED light. And you see where it says, actually says on here, eh, oh, backwards, right there, daylight. So what that means is it doesn't have any orangeness to the light. It's more of a clean, pure light. And my final tip is going to be, if you've got a white wall available, put the camera right in front of the white wall. And then you've got your white wall right behind your camera. Then shine the lights on the white wall. And then that light bounces back and it just looks so nice on you. It's just going to be this nice reflected wash of white light on you that's going to make you look better on camera. So number one, kill any dramatically different light, light source, like out, outdoor lighting and uh, cut that off. And then manage all your light, have your lighting over near where your camera is. And it could be one of those hardware store clamp lamps. 
But the best thing is going to be if you point those lamps, those lights at a big white surface, maybe you have a white ceiling and bounce a whole bunch of light off your white ceiling. The main thing is you don't want your light coming straight overhead, straight from the sides or from down underneath or something like that. You know, you want your light over near where your camera is and you're going to be your best possible look on camera, even with these cheap, crummy webcams that we're all using these days. Hope that helps. Thank you, sir. That's good stuff. That is, in fact, exactly the bulbs I have in these lights I have. Very good. Yes, thanks. And Mac, you're up. Hey, uh, thank you, Larry. I, I needed that session. So uh, I said we're going to talk about employee retention. I'm going to talk about one plan in particular. It's called the Executive Bonus 162 plan. The 162 is actually the IRS code that this falls under. So let's start by saying this. When, when you recruit employees, they're always asking you about your benefits, and that's extremely important. But a lot of benefits, you cannot discriminate. If you put that benefit in place, you have to put it in place for everyone. So we're going to talk about a benefit that you want to put in place for one of your key employees, somebody that's extremely important to your organization. If they walked out or they went over to a competitor, it's going to hurt your business. So we want to hang on to this person. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up a bonus plan and we're going to make a promise to put a bonus in this plan for this employee every year as long as they stay with us. Now, typically what they will use for a vehicle with this plan is a life insurance policy. And the reason that we're doing that is because there's an immediate benefit for the employee with the life insurance coverage that could be extremely important for his family. So. We use a cash value life insurance policy. The employer puts the bonus in the policy. It becomes taxable, the bonus is, to the employee. So there will be a little bit of taxes that the employee is going to have to pay every year on this bonus. But if the employer wants to, they can do a double bonus. And the second part of the bonus is just to help to offset that, that tax load. So now the employee has a benefit in place where they're getting a bonus accumulating for them every year, and that cash that is accumulating in there, the employee is going to own that, and they're going to be able to do what they want to do with that cash value at some point in time. But that, that becomes an extremely important benefit for them because when you look at it, the cash value could be used to fund college for one of their children down the road. It can be used for their retirement. And also using a life insurance policy, you can put a disability benefit in there so that if something happens to this employee, the life insurance company is going to pay that bonus for you now. So an extremely powerful way to put something in place that employee is going to benefit from greatly. And that's going to help, help you hang on to that employee and keep them from going down the road working for your competition. So the executive 162 bonus plan. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Well, now it's my turn. I'll even play my intro. Now, what I wanna talk about um, I did a, an informal survey of head height, of head size on screen. I went to YouTube, uh, found some clips of news programs, and news programs in particular, national and local, where there's a single person talking just like this in a 16 by 9 format. And I just did a survey of how big they are and how zoomed in the camera is on somebody. Uh, and here's what I found. It is about uh, 45, 50% of the height of the screen. That's what most news programs are using. Uh, and it's varied, of course. It's, it's somewhere as low as 40%, somewhere bigger than uh, 50%, uh, up to 55% or so. Uh, but they were all around 50%. And so here is my uh, quick bullet point guidance for anybody for how to set up your camera. Uh, 
make your head height about 50%, leave space at the top of about 12% of the screen height. That's about what I was finding too on all of these, uh, the survey of news programs. Uh, and that's it, the bullet point advice, 50% height for your head of the screen height, put your head, the top of your head near the top of the screen, but leave a little bit of margin, at least 10%. Uh, and that's my bit this week uh, for the media part of it. I do wanna finish with this one Word of the day, scapula. Scapula, I was amazed to learn a few years ago how much they move. Uh, why is that important now? Because we all sit at our desks so much. Uh, go up to YouTube, look up scapula, how much they move. Uh, what they control is posture and how far back your shoulders pull. Work on, work on posture because if you sit at a desk too much, you end up like this, and this it's the scapula and all the muscles that move the scapula that keep you uh, upright. That's my tip. As soon as you're done here, get up, do some stretching, stretch the muscles in front, work the scapula in back, go to YouTube, look up uh, some videos on how the scapula work. And our next Lunch Bunch is Thursday, May 28th at 11 a.m. Thank you to everybody for joining us. See you then.